Hi, Tim. How are you doing? Hi. You getting my signal okay now? Audio and everything? Yes, yes. Both work perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, those are some really good words by Eric. I, I really, yes. everything he said was very good. Um, for several years, I've always wanted to attend one of the conferences, but obviously they're so far away and there are so many things have going on in our own places that it's hard to make it. Yeah. To I didn't ask, whereabouts are you based? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. So, so we're um, about seven hours west of New York City by car. Okay. Yeah, yeah. not close. Mm, it's okay. It's off in the woods, a lot of trees, but it's a steel <laughs> town. It's the town that made a lot of the steel for both Chicago and New York City. Oh, wow. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, there's a big university here, Carnegie Mellon University, and uh, medical centers that have provided a lot of um, great uh, finds in, in medicine in the past. So it's not that big of a city, but it's been kind of an important one over the years. Punched above his weight. Yeah. So our organization, it's, it's basically, actually, it's based in Rome, and we have uh, residences all over the oh, world. Oh, is it Catholic? Yes. Uh, so I'm Catholic. You mentioned earlier, so I'm Catholic as well, and I was like, oh, I'd love to ask you, but obviously, normally, we don't really talk about it. Yeah, things. no, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so yeah. it's based in Rome, and it was started in 1928. Okay, and wow. Each of the residences around the world, of which there were probably in about 150 countries, and each one of them operates on its own as far as its clientele and the people they deal with. But what's interesting to us staff members, we may be traveling from place to place um, on occasion. So we have about, I would say, 50 residences in the United States. And I've lived in ones in St. Louis and in New York City. So I was really following what Eric was talking about because I lived in the Upper West Side and Midtown Manhattan. So yeah. I know what they're going through because our, our main headquarters in the United States is based in New York City. Yeah. And they've really gone through it. And I can see what he means by it being really hard hit with COVID. Yeah, it puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. So as of eight o'clock this morning, I didn't even know this, this uh, gathering was going to take place. All right, okay. So I got the email and I responded right away. And it's, it's one idea is just it's been um, a very useful tool and it just at times being responded to by Lobo himself, like when I've posted something and try to solve some little problem of mine, like within seconds, the guy would come up with an answer and it would be accurate, complete. <laughs> and I would still be lazy about putting it into, into effect, but it's, it's been really such a useful tool. We migrated from, what was that? There was a program called Paradox. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Nope. But it's basically something like Access for Microsoft, where okay. it would have an SQL database and it would have forms that would drive and find that information in the, in the databases. And then you could connect many computers to it, but it was more meant for a LAN system. But as the internet grew, you don't want to be limited by a LAN system, is what yeah, I've sure. found out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people were very nervous about migrating from a LAN system or on someone's computer and really the information is not super critical for, you know, if you were to, if I was to lose all my information, it would be phone numbers and addresses and that would email addresses. That might be it. People yeah. do want to protect their data, but there's no information like credit cards or money sure. or things like that. Yeah. So I basically wanted to find a good way to then communicate with people that we know and and make it possible for them to update things so that not one person has to be responsible for all of that. Like okay. Karen was saying, to, to make web forms that you can do a lot of things all at once. Yeah. But that means you have, you have to have somebody who can multitask and do a lot of things at the same time. I can do a lot of things at the same time, but some people are kind of have to focus their energies when they get to a form or they log into a certain part of the database and, and whatnot. So- you can I mean, that's the other thing as well is when you're talking about, so are you talking about people, uh, you know, in some of the other residences? Both, re both, well, no, just our own residents with the okay. people who are in contact with us. So for instance, okay. we might over the course of the year be in contact with 500 people, but over the years, I've got, a re I've got um, several thousand records and some of them are inactive. Yeah, sure. And I've, I've already, I've encouraged other organizations, other centers that we have around the United States to use it, but it just, it's, 
it's to overcome a lot of difficulty at the very beginning. Just, just the learning curve is quite steep on them building their own system. And I think it doesn't, we don't have to build new systems all the time. No, exactly. And, am I right in thinking that the people that you are talking about, so in terms of the contacts, broadly speaking, that their, te their technical skills are wide and varied. And you might have some who are really fine and capable, but you've probably got large numbers. Knowing the churches I do, there's probably large numbers of people who are not very technical. That's I'm not right. very, yeah. So um, my brother and I, he was actually on the call. He was the one, so my brother was the one who spoke up about room two, uh, Matt. Who was that? He's called Matt. He spoke up Matt. about, yeah, he spoke up about room two and explained um, what Louise would have been talking about in room two, the uh, volunteer, civvy volunteer and about how right. it could be, should be better sort of thing. Right. Um, so my brother and I have had long discussions about how we can use our skill set to better help churches because we know that churches are often, they're really good at the face-to-face -face stuff, they're really good at the pastoral stuff, but we live in an age now where everything is kind of online or, or some form of on digital. And and actually just being able to support churches to be able to do that, and I know you're not technically a parish from what you've said, but the sort of broader, you know, congregations in that way of being able to use the best of things like CRM. CRM. Yeah. And, and use it effectively within their organization. And we're just about to start working with a community in the UK because um, they've realized that they des they've been working off spreadsheets and, uh, th you know, it's just, it's kind of really difficult. During COVID-19, they had somebody who was unable to work in the office, which meant that there's basically everything that was on her computer is totally unobtainable because mm -hmm. that's how they've got the system set up. So we're like, this is just, this is crazy because this is so much easier to, to, you know, if you have something like CV CRM, it's totally possible to manage this and still doing it in a secure and safe way. Um, you can with a, with a database, there's other things that you can make things easier. So I don't know if you've ever used checksum tokens. Most people use emails. Most people are happy to do emails. I, certainly older populations, really older, wouldn't do emails, but um, there are definitely wide numbers of the population who do use emails. You can send people an email with a checksum token from the database, which takes them to a, even a web form. So like I said, the really sort of simplified interface where you've just got a simple web form or a profile, they both are sort of, if they're simple enough, that's either will do. Um, that's pre-filled with information that you have on the database that they can then update and save. Mm -hmm. so they don't. They can see what information you have. If, if their address has changed or if their phone number's changed, then they can just change it and save it. And that means that your information is more up to date. You, you're able to use that communication that you may already have. You may already have sort of email communications. And all you're doing is saying, click on this link and just check your details and hit save and that's you know it's really straightforward to do something like that yeah well what i've done um in the past um so for years i was using mailchimp and i would take my civi database which is more accurate because yeah. i was maintaining the records i would export to a csv file import it into mailchimp and then send out and i said you know what with this with the capabilities of civi crm it doesn't have to lead people back to the database uh, structure itself but I can easily get emails out. So I can do that when there are fewer than 50 people, but I haven't figured out exactly how to do that with larger groups of- Okay, records. so uh, can I share my screen? Sure. Uh, so I've still got the demo so, set. Think... Since COVID-19, um, all, almost all of our people are email savvy, so that's not an issue. And it was super easy to send information to people to give them uh, details, even with the tokens, I would just put in their first name and it, they would all look at it as if it were coming directly from me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really so, enjoyed it's that. so this, I've got, I was talking about it just before you joined the call, actually. So I'll just have a, so the database itself, if I go to the mailings function, so you have to, 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 if you've not got that menu, you just have to make sure that that component is ticked. Okay. Um, there's a list of components, which is basically more or less corresponds to the menus that we've got across the top here. So if you if you don't see mailings as a, as an actual drop down itself, then uh, enable it under the components. Um, 
Now, the new Mosaico, sorry, the new Mailing Traditional, uh, if you've not got Mosaico installed, that's at the top. I think we... I did install Mosaico, but I haven't done much with it yet. I think I okay. used it once. So, well, so the new Mailing Traditional is the very, that's almost identical to what you've already been using for aim, emailing up to 50 people. Right. And it okay. looks the same, it behaves the same way, you can use tokens. Um, and the only thing is when you're sending it, to, if you're using it from here, when you send it to so the, the recipients, instead of identifying the names, you just identify a group of contacts. Okay. So these mailings are all done by groups and you can have any number in your group. It can be, you know, thousands. Um, and then because I've got Mosaico installed, I did warn you it's quite slow, so I'll just have a look. That's okay. Uh, because I've got Mosaico installed, I can, the new mailing defaults to um, the Mosaico tool. So it opens up like this, which is more like something like MailChimp. Right. Uh, if you have used MailChimp before, this is not an, a big leap. So on the page before, I actually just skipped it. Uh, I'll go back and to it. It gives you different templates and you can build your own templates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always say, actually, the first time you use Mosaico, give yourself at least an hour. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think, I don't know if you've ever built a website, but you can spend ages just kind of tweaking this and tweaking that and changing this size here and moving. So to build a template, and, and again, so you basically get to the same screen, but you go to uh, Mosaico templates, which is there. So you, that's your starting point. And then the next, then when you want to use the template, then you go to new mailing, but you create it first or the templates. Um, so yeah, it's just about thinking about, uh, even in templates, you don't have to use a template. You can just do start from scratch each time and just do a very simple one. Um, but if you're doing a template, have something in mind, yeah. if you like, that you can use as a kind of, if I was doing that particular email, if I was doing that particular newsletter, what would it look like? What would be useful? How many columns? How many images? Um, so that you've got something that's useful as a starting point each time. Um, Due so to yeah, the variety it, of email um, domains that people have, um, there are a lot of businesses and corporations. And so I've tried to simplify by almost doing text only in these emails so as to not get them caught into spam folders. Because it seems like any time... I've asked them if they got the mail. I can see, you know, which one, which people get which um, emails and MailChimp, but it, but they're getting a lot more of them from uh, Civi CRM when I send just a text only email, which I they appreciate. Otherwise, they don't even get the information. Yeah. So you mentioned you use SiteGround, don't you, for your hosting? Yes. So I, when I'm first setting up a database, uh, I don't think I've got it in here. But I usually set up a, te a contact called test mail tester, mm -hmm. uh, just because then I know who it is. So I don't know if you've ever come across this particular website. So this is I've mail. I've heard of it, but I've not used it. So I find this really useful. But I'm gonna, I'll just go through the process that I would go through. So I'm just gonna copy this email here. It's not the quickest. Um, I think it's just because I've got it on, uh, I think the server basically realizes that I never log into this. So there's yeah. absolutely no server, um, like server load for this. And it just sits there. When it, Then when I try and use it, it goes, ooh, we're not used to this in, in use. Right, so hmm. I've created a, a test contact and then I send, send an email. Right to this now so obviously you want to send it from whatever you do i'm logged in so it's defaulted to my personal email mm -hmm. but i want to send it from whatever the normal from email would be just to be sure now it complains if i don't use actual text so i'm just gonna type some stuff in and so i'm gonna try and get as high a score as possible i'm yeah. gonna paste that into the plain text as well just this is going for a good score if possible so I send the email. I've literally I've done nothing to this site. It's a demo site, so I'm, excuse, I'm expecting to get a fully poor score, or even that it's not even received. Oh, there you go, five point eight. Okay, that's so, so five point eight is kind of not great. It's not bad, but it's not great. But it tells you specifically what's missing. So there's no deacon. Uh, so this is something that's worth spending a bit of time on. Mm -hmm. um, 
Where's the? Oh, so it's given me a minus two just because it doesn't like the my text that I put in. It says it's not very original. Yeah. Um, there you go. Look, it's saying no. So this got, gives you a lot of parameters and and how it it grades those parameters. Yeah, definitely. So that so. Um, it is possible to get 10 out of 10. I, ha I have got 10 out of 10. Um, I don't generally set a DMARC record, but I nearly always make sure both SPF and DKIM are set up um, that I, as a given. So that's the first thing I'd check is if you need to play around with your DNS records. And this is really faffy. I do find this something that's really kind of, you can be second guessing whether you've got it right half the time. But yeah. SiteGround should have some good info about this because um, it, it's fairly standard now that you would have to have both SPF and DKIM records in your DNS settings. Mm -hmm. um, but once you've got that, you will get a better score. You will start getting good scores. Uh, but you can test this from your database. And that okay. just and the feedback, it just means it gives you something to go on so you can make sure that you're capturing some useful stuff. Right. right. Uh, and improve. And that's going to make a big difference. Um, and the other thing just to bear in mind, the mail reports, so that's the equivalent of like in MailChimp. If you, so if you send something through MailChimp, it will tell you how many times people received it, how many times they clicked on it, how many times they've opened it, um, and any bounces, any unsubscribes. So the mail reports on here will also give you that breakdown. Okay. And if by default, I don't know why this is something unticked, but under display settings, this is unticked by default, but it's I quite like having mail. See, I don't know why it's the only one that's unticked by oh, default. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this or... this means I don't think I've sent out any book. Category. So it's what it is is so these are the tabs that you see on the yeah. contact records. So I'll go back to Mail Tester. <clears throat> And I think back in CRM 4.1, I had to set up cron to try to send this out at a certain time and it, I could never get that to function properly. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Again, SiteGround should help, but any with any of this, if, you, if you're if you sort of actually sat there trying to figure it out, just give me a buzz if you're stuck. Okay. Uh, bear in mind different time zones, but um, yeah, we're not, sure. you're, you're at least on the right side of America, so we're probably not <laughs> too different. Um, uh, so yeah, this, tab by default is switched off but I quite like having this tab switched on so once you've started using this to send and you can see the column here for example so you can see oh open. yeah okay so yeah. mine must be checked off and I have to okay because I don't see that tab that's for sure yeah so once you've started to send the bulk this is only bulk emails not individual emails but bulk emails going from the database it will tell you for one individual if how often are they opening it how often are they ticking on it so I can look at the mail report to see totals you know out of 100 people 99 were sent one bounced um 10 people have clicked on this link five people have clicked on that link so i can see the kind of top level and i can drill down as well from there you can have a you can click on that see which five people clicked on the link which five people clicked on that link right um, but what i find this quite useful to look as an individual to see the pattern you know that history of how engaged is this individual um and often it's also useful if they're saying, I don't get your newsletter. And then you come here and you say, but you've opened it at least twice. Yeah, I get that quite frequently. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what you mean by you're not getting it. That's it. <laughs> you're not um, remembering that you opened it is what you mean to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this, it's just, it's, again, it's just helping when you're troubleshooting. So if you are finding that people are giving, the feedback is not, tallying with what you think is happening right. it connects awesome you to pin down to what's going on um so I, but usually I what i do is i collect the names because like i'll i'll grab a group and that might be 43 names and i'll select all the boxes and then i'll say send mail send email less yeah. than 50 names yeah but beyond that i don't know how to if i were to send one to all 450 yeah. how that actually well, works both Mosaico and this one are allow you allow more than 50, uh, any number. There's no upper limit. But if you do it, as you just mentioned, if you go through the search menu and just send, because it's just creating activity then, which right. is an email activity. So bulk email and activity email are two separate things. 
So this, these ones here are bulk emails and there's no limit on the upper number. Um, the, again, the other thing is just to double check with site. SiteGround shouldn't have a problem with you sending out, I mean, 450, it wouldn't have a problem at all sending yeah. out that number. Um, what was I going to say? So the Schedule other thing jobs. you you actually went down to a spot that's confused me in the past. All right. Well, let's have a look at that because the, the two things I was going to show you, but schedule jobs is one of them. So yeah. schedule jobs says, so let me go to the one. See this one, I would always have this one set to always, right? And generally my cron runs every 15 minutes. That's how I set up the cron. So I generally mm -hmm. set up the cron to go every 15 minutes. And that means that this goes every 15 minutes. But actually some hosting will say, but you're not allowed to send, like if you've got 5,000 in your group, you can't send 5,000 emails in one go, in one, like, there we go. Right. It's gone. Mm -hmm. So you have to throttle it. What they ask you is to do some email throttling. So they say you're allowed to spend, send, um, so if Civi hosting, for example, do something like, yeah, I can't remember how it works out as something like 900 per 15 minutes, mm -hmm. something like that. So did, I think they say 60 a minute, which is like 900. I'm not sure my maths, but um, so they're, average, they're happy with an average of 900 emails per 15 minutes. So if my cron's going every 15 minutes, then my throttle has to be no more, no more than 900 emails go out in each batch. Okay. So if I've got a batch of 3,000, that means that that's going to take about an hour and a half to send because it's mm -hmm. going to send the first 900 and then it's going to send the next 900 and it'll keep going every 15 minutes it'll pick up the next 900 until all of them have gone but you don't have to select different groups of people no, and, exactly and that's size. why that's why the mailings use this language called schedule so all you do is schedule it so you say here you go here's my mail i'm going to schedule it send now or send in an hour and then CV, and then Civi CRM takes over and says, right, okay, you've scheduled, we're going to take this, but you've throttled it, so we'll we'll send them in batches. And as long as this is sent to say always, and your cron is going every fifteen minutes, then the um, then yeah, it will just it'll take as long as it takes. You know, it might take an hour and a half, it might take half, it depends on your numbers. And where is the syntax of that cron to send that particular scheduled mailing? Okay, so. The syntax for the, for, so what you want to do is set on, so on SiteGround is probably slightly different. Each hosting provider is subtly mm -hmm. different. So I'm going to sort of guess. So I'll give you Civi hosting, for example, and SiteGround will be similar-ish. Yeah. So what happens is on the control panel, I, I create a cron uh, that says run every 15 minutes. And then I create a file on the private uh, in the private files uh, which is just one line that basically says run um, um, here's the login details for Civi if you like it's got login details uh, hit the, for Civi's cron and it has a, I can't remember the exact command but it's got like that's it like you said the syntax so it's one line that says run mm -hmm. Civi's cron so the control panel every 15 minutes runs that fi the file I've created, that, that one line script that you've saved somewhere. Yeah. In your so every file 15 manager. minutes, the control panel is just running that script and mm -hmm. that will do. And then what that will run is controlled by this page. So lots of them on here are disabled. So you can see lots of smart group cache is disabled. Um, lots of things are disabled. Yeah. Gate check is enabled. So you, so you have to make sure that this is enabled. I can edit the um, scheduled mail in itself, but I don't have to, here I don't have to edit anything. Um, mm -hmm. I can check, the only thing I might change is how often it runs. Yeah. Okay, so that's, or, or um, yeah. The, the only time I've been any anything more sophisticated than just switch it on or off and how often um, is one that I use called Mail Reports. And this one does come with slightly more instructions, which basically, so I use this to send out something once a month on the first, so one of my sites says they want a report on the, a specific report to go to the trustees on the first of the month. So in other words, I schedule the run date for the first of July and then to run monthly there onwards, right? 
So that's like start. a macro for having knowing what all the syntax is for a cron line. Yeah, and that's where you need to. So it's it has subtly changed recently. Um, I don't want to try and tell you something off the top of my head because it is because. But this yeah, API well. call that you have your job and mail report that remains consistent, like. Yeah, exactly. So that bit I don't change. Yeah. That bit I can leave as is. And all I need to do is make sure that Civi Cron is working. There's two or three different ways to do it. And SiteGround, so there's definitely information on the, um, if I go to the sysadmin, Oh yes, I've been there before. Yeah, <laughs> give you at least one scheduled job. Now that's not useful, is it? I think now this is the page I was hoping that would be more useful. This is the page I always go to, uh, even if I'm not using Civi hosting. Back to your hosting site. Yeah, so they've got quite useful how to make a cron job for Civi CRM, and they'll say this is how to do it on Civi hosting, but they'll also kind of go, but if you're not on Civi hosting. This is you can do it this way. It's very similar, other hosting. Yeah, it's. So, I think it's my. I think it's struggling because I've got the video on as well. But it'll work. But that's they're quite useful, uh, and I certainly would recommend having a look at their page for how to make a Civi cron job. So mm -hmm. you've got the cron job running in the background that just runs the script, that one line of script every fifteen minutes. Then you've got the schedule jobs where you decide what happens when in those fifteen minutes, how many things are switched on or off. Right. Um, yeah, so this is the one I tend to do, is I make that. Yeah, a shell file. file. Yeah, and that's just uh, it, in the private area of the mm -hmm. thing. And then this is your line. So if it's Drupal, Drupal 7. Oh, so go, oh, I see. So maybe I'll find the same thing on site ground. Yeah, so hopefully it'll be similar to that. If you, as long as you've got somewhere to save this, and then you can point yeah, on job at this. I, I do other, I've had um, friends of mine write Perl code to grab things from the SQL database that's generated by Civi CRM. And it's so easy. It's like, for instance, you can find out everybody's birthday today or everybody's having a birthday the next week. And I just get an email sent to me automatically at three o'clock in the morning. It gives me cool. all those details. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, there's a... Uh, under the docs, there are a full list of things that you can create as a cron job, as a schedule job. Um, mm. I think there's a handful that are not list that are not actually on, but are possible. That um, I've, n I d I d I've never had to do that. Basically, all of the ones that you'll ever need are there. You just enable or disable. Okay, well, it's uh, getting very late for you, so I appreciate all the time okay. that you spent on this. Uh, it's all right. It's eight o'clock. Tutorial, it's not let's say. <laughs> Yeah, um, there's one just last thing I just wanted to say to you, the, the throttling, I was just going to point you at that and I just All wanted, yeah. um, it's under Civi Mail and it's mm -hmm. under Mail a second, it's not, it's under Civi Mail, I think it's that one, no it's not, it must be on the other one. Mail or settings. Yeah, it must be that one, yeah that's it. So this is where you decide how much, if you're going to throttle it and how much. Yes, it. I remember seeing this too. Yeah. So this, so, that's, yeah, exactly. That's what you're trying to, you're trying to kind of balance that. So um, making sure, thinking about how big your biggest ever mailing would be. And mm -hmm. then making sure that it's not going to, that your hosting provider isn't going to, what are the limits that your hosting provider is recommending? So SiteGround will have recommendations about what they prefer you to set your mail as. And then that's where you would decide, that's where you'd uh, sort it out. So let's say you wanted to send out 1,000 right now. What would you set that to be? I set, certainly to begin with, and again, because, right, email is so sensitive. As you've said, people get it bounced all the time. So what I tend to do is, is put it on a more conservative number, put it on like 500, uh, so that your mail server doesn't feel overloaded or being like that you're being spammy. Mm -hmm. And so once you've dis once it's decided you're probably a safe sender, then so you're tr you're kind of trying to build up trust with the mail server first, so that you don't look like spam. Yeah. So I'm even if the, so even the Civi hosting say you can send up to nine hundred an hour 
and like a quarter every 15 minutes um then i still go for 500 which we you can increase over time mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with putting it up but you start with kind of a, a safer amount um i don't think i'll ever get to those numbers but it's good to know and, yeah and i know what you mean it's just something else happens you know it's, i start doing this for even larger clients or something i think the other thing is is trying to to everything in your power to make sure that the emails that you do send get through so it doesn't in it in the sense the amount is only really critical because what you're trying to do is make sure that they you're trying to make everything look as not i'm not spam as possible that's, that's right what to do. yeah and that's precisely what happened with COVID 19 you had to suddenly tell let's say 250 guys that they can't come to the activities tomorrow yeah. Yeah, and and you just had to get that information out there, and you could do it by Mailchimp, but th- there were a lot of guys, and I would look at the click rates, and they were pretty low. Some, I mean, I'd say forty five percent, but you want that one hundred percent, like with. Yeah, you'll never get one hundred percent. Yeah, I know it depends on <laughs> yeah. them too. I I just I attended a uh, it's like a spam conference that we had in Pittsburgh in October, and we had people from all over the world. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, yeah, it's called E Crime 2019 APWG. Okay. Um, Anti fishing um, group. Yeah, okay. And their goal was to try to find the bad guys out there, bad guys yeah. and bad girls who, who would um, not just spam, but they're, they're really doing evil things. Yeah, and it's getting worse, isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. we were there with probably 150 people. And what I found, there was a representative from MailChimp, um, two people, and they told me how difficult it's getting, just within the last year, how much the spammers have learned to yeah. go behind the doors, even at MailChimp, to get stuff, to get information, to try to get another breach going, things like that. So yeah, wow. they gave a lot of conference talks about breaches and losing information and um, mules and all kinds of incredible things that go on behind the scenes and it's just getting worse okay yep yep so i think people think you're mad when you start to say because uh, in, in europe we now constantly get um prompted every single time we open a website now we get prompted to ask if we want to save cookies or not and yes, they, the same thing here yeah and i keep saying to people um the point this this is good because now you can say no like that's the point is that you're not just supposed to say yeah okay 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 and just make it go away the whole point is you've now got control you can now tell them to stop tracking it like there are things that you can do because actually that information may be used against you or even just to influence you you know that's and you may not want to you've got the option to say i don't need influencing i'm quite happy not to influence thank you very much right so these are the people that at least that what I deal with are the people that want contact. And so you want to be able to communicate with them. And that's all I'm trying to do with the Civi CRM. And it's really such a valuable tool and that you can modify and adjust so many things in the forms and the reports. And it's super valuable. So I really appreciated all the work the guys have done on that. That's fine. And like I say, when you, tr- if, when, if, and when you sit down to sort of put some of this into practice and start thinking about, uh, you know, judge about your colleagues that they were earlier making potentially web, web forms and views. Um, if you've just got any, honestly, any questions, some of the documentation, for, so the documentation app for web forms is all about web forms. It's not about CIVI and mm-hmm. all the documentation for CIVI is about CIVI and not Drupal. So it's, yeah. it can be quite hard to find. Just tell me how to do, but that, I want to do the bit that's in between that integration with, I'm using a Drupal tool, but it's CIVI data and how did, how do I make it do this? So, um, right. it, yeah, honestly, any questions, however, yeah, just ask it. It's fine. Well, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much for the extra time. That's all right. It's good. It's good to speak to you. It's always useful. So I'm, I'm glad we've had an opportunity to, it's useful. Good. Um, all right. Excellent. Take care. Well, have a very good evening, and I'll I'll shoot you a message now. So, now you said um, about matter more matters more. Animus. So matter most. Yeah, it, that that's fine. If I go to that, so it's chat. Yeah. I don't know. Have you been on there at all? No, I have not. Okay. So this is a really good place to ask questions. So even if 
Uh, I'm not around. There's lots and lots of people who are around asking questions. Um, and you can see up there, I'm just, Ro that's my handle on there is just at Rose. Um, and so there's an attempt at an avatar that looks a bit like me. That's so, good. <laughs> so you all kind of know it's me because it vaguely looks like the right avatar. Right. Um, so yeah, feel free to just ask, you can ask direct questions. So there's public channels, you're automatically, so I'm in town square at the moment, so you can ask anything in there. Um, but you can also use a Drupal channel to ask some of the uh, web form questions or views questions. Um, and then you can also send a direct message if you've got a specific question for somebody who you've seen this evening um, yeah. to ask uh, something specific. So I find it amazing. I mean, it's open source and I'm thinking, how do all these people make their salaries to take care of their families? That's, that's something else about this whole project of Civi CRM that is, you know. There's, I mean, there are people, there are definitely organizations in Civi, who provide Civi CRM who are making a good profit. Um, but I would also say that actually there's a lot of people um, who just, like Eric said, we're just here to try and make the world a better place. Yeah. And as long as I've got, you know, I'm not going to ask for, you know, the, for the clients that I work with, I'm not trying to ask a silly amount of money. I just want to make sure that we can pay our bills. My husband thinks I'm mad because it's like, an, it's not the best business model. Yeah. <laughs> because like you could, I, if you do exactly the same job, you know, software development in the private sector, you know, triple your earnings overnight. Mm -hmm. But sell your soul at the same time. I'd rather not. So <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite happy where I am. Really happy. Yeah. Well, very good. Thanks a lot for all your help. Yeah, it's good to meet you. All right, and we'll be in take touch care. in the future, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye.